Hey everybody, what's up? Um, so uh, this is the second video on making the example mission um, that will basically show how to use the system and what you get with it. The previous video, I have a little apology to make for. I uh, recorded it in such a way that you couldn't see this properties dialog. It wasn't really that important to the content, um, but it did like show some names and probably make some things more clear. And even, even if that had worked, I'm still gonna do what I'm gonna do right now, which is quickly, quickly recap. So this mission is just like basic Lupino, scenery is imported, and I went to groups and imported Boneyard right here, um, which this is what you download. In fact, since I'm showing it to you this way, um, it's this group right here um, in there. Um, you, it, it won't be hard to find. Um, and I'll probably continue to update, and I guess I can't continue to update this link because you can only edit posts for a little bit. Um, so I guess I'll just keep making new posts. Anywho, um, back to it. So when you download that, you'll get this group. It'll always be version to use the newest version. Um, and this is basically just a collection of units that is like, imagine this is like your, your Lego box or some shit like that. Like each of these things are the, like the little units that you can shove together and make a mission. So I went over them in some depth in last one. In this one, we're not going to go over them as much depth, but I'm going to show you how to put them out and hook them up. Um, so we're going to go in here. And I imported them, they came like this. I always had groupy actors and scenery, but I mean, like, you guys can do whatever you want. Um, and I'll just do a quick overview here. This top level one is the battle controller. This um, records and displays, and to, to say the same thing that I said last time, the display is kind of not what I want right now, but it's functional. So I'm leaving it like that until it's time to change it. Um, and it just kind of like displays what, what the general status is. Um, that general status is pretty much, there's kind of like, the Germans are kind of winning, <laughs> the Germans are totally winning, the Russians are kind of winning, the Russians are totally winning, and there's two win conditions. It's the semaphore that has to be unlocked, although you can just do so at the beginning of a mission if you don't want to bother with that um, feature. But basically, it, it normally sets up something that like a multiplayer plane has to do, um, some kind of success um, or thing. And so the next thing I'll talk about are those kind of things. Um, uh, which are, like, I have them named here as something specific. My uh, very pedantic self wants to call them what they really are, um, which is really just two varieties, one being um, random land and the other one being waypoint based of control effective like directors for multiplayer aircraft. So this one I call recon because it really is set up for recon, but you can change it to anything else that you want to be a waypoint thing, like maybe artillery spotting um, by just changing the names. So like this basically has a collection of things that look for an airplane named Recon. And when it gets an airplane named Recon, it, it kind of like puts a marker on the map and telling the, any multiplayer flight named Recon to go there. And so you take off in a Recon plane and you fly to that location. And if you succeed at flying through that location, it'll give you a brand new waypoint. And then another brand new waypoint. And then another brand new waypoint. And then a place to land. And you can go up and take off with like more than one of your friends in the recon. Like more than one person can be active at it at a time. But there's only one recon space um, currently active. And you follow through those. Any plane getting through them that's named recon will make that succeed. So you can really work together on this if you so wish. And then w at least one of the planes that do the recon have to successfully land. And it has to be done in one sequence. So like if you take off with a bunch of friends and one of you dies, another one can still succeed at it. Um, but you pretty much have a timer between each waypoint before it resets and you have to do it again. And then, but that really is much more general than that. Like it could be totally artillery spotting and you could change this to artillery spotting by just going in here and changing some words. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. This one is the same general concept in that it directs um, a multiplayer airplane, but it's just for landing. And what it does is it has four different air bases that it cares about and it randomly, um, when once it, it has one randomly out at a time, and when that one succeeds, a new random one comes out. So it's great for supply lines, and it's great for how it's set up here, um, running out wounded. And so like it basically kind of keeps track of how many times um, wounded flights have succeeded at at landing at the air bases that it displays. It also, whichever one of them is currently active, gets a pretty significant active contingent of defense. So it's, um, it's a pretty protected flight. Um, how those interact with the rest of the system, we'll talk in a little bit, but one of them is inside this battle, and as I said, that can be the win condition. So, like, it's very frequent that something like, you have to get your wounded out, or you simply can't win no matter how much you've defended, defeated um, the enemy troops. So, uh, it gives you that, that capability. So, again, that's a little battle controller. It says, like, kind of how well battle is going, which direction it's going in, and whether or not one or the other side has basically competed their primary objective, and that's the, that's the win condition kind of thing. 
which you can just turn off and say, hey, you can just win by being um, dominant. So, and that is the default, by the way. So then this is how we group things together, and I use very general militaristic terms. They are not correct, but they follow the same general um, organizational structure. So at the top level, I have an army, um, and inside the army, um, you put divisions. And inside the divisions, you put what I'm calling units, but are really kind of like battalions. Um, small collections of similar units performing a single task. Um, and yes, of course, there should be other sizes of things. <laughs> there should be brigades. Um, but like this is just this is just to be clear, not to be accurate, if you catch me. So um, the army, what it provides you with, um, despite not just containing divisions, but it contains divisions in a parallel manner. So if you put three divisions inside an army, all three of them will be active all the time while the army is active. It provides you with a front line. That's where these icons are up here. And it displays how well it's doing. It's at one of four stages. Um, and kind of all our units work that way, where they're either at like A, B, C, or D, where A is like totally kicking ass and um, D is failing. And which unit is currently active and what the units are currently doing depend on those settings at each level. So um, the army contains divisions and maintains a level. It also has a, has a base. This is like a bunch of units um, and uh, and a multi. It has like a like a base, like you know, like fuel and tanks and a couple little trucks, like that kind of base. Like that is a primary target. And if you hit that primary target, it will hit, it will hurt the whole army. Um, so it also needs to be defended. It additionally provides a multiplayer air base that is also tied to the quality of the army. So if the army is at its best level, which I demonstrate with colors, and those are blue for the best, green for doing pretty good, orange for starting to hurt, and red for like really being in trouble. And in just a moment, we'll talk a little bit more about how those affect gameplay. Um, so the army provides you with a, a regular base and an air base. Um, you can put those close to each other if you want, and a way of col collecting um, and controlling divisions. Um, which we'll talk about right now, and it can control divisions in parallel. So, like, if you have three divisions inside an army, they're all active at the same time. Now, divisions control contain units, but unlike the parallel behavior of armies, divisions are um, sequential. So, they're actually technically a thing called a zipper. Um, so, one is active at a time, and depending on success or failure of that currently active one, it can control which the next one is that is active. And so it controls units. And when we talk about units and show units being displayed, that'll make a lot more sense. Um, inside the division, um, it also provides you with some things, kind of like how the army provides you with a base and a um, multiplayer air base. This provides you with uh, two supply lines, um, which do have effect, um, and a very small base. Um, this is more like kind of supply deep. It's actually set up by default that the supply lines run to it. Um, and it's kind of like where whatever units are contained in here might start. And it just provides a little bit of artillery, um, really, and a few units. It also maintains levels. But unlike the army, which, which levels are just kind of like control the, um, the overall air base and kind of like what things are going on, um, when the divisions level controls actually very explicitly what unit is, is active. And you can put between one and four units inside a division. Only one will be active at a time. It guarantees that. Um, and that's how you can kind of control how many things are active at once. So like you you could put in four levels of tanks that are maybe performing different actions. They could even be the same kind of tank. They could be different kinds of tanks. Um, you could also put in a tank, an airplane set, and uh, a train. <laughs> and like, I mean, that'd be kind of absurd, but you could. Um, and so it just sequences through them. So you kind of set, if you have two, then two are normally, um, one of them is normally active for level A and B. Um, the blue and the green, and the other one is normally active for the orange and the red. If you have four, then it's one for each level. Um, I toyed with allowing you to do more than that, but like that's kind of silly. It takes a long time for these units to go through. Like even the fastest ones take about ten minutes to run their course. Um, it can be a little bit shorter if you're really hammering them with bombs or something, really killing them fast. But like that means that having five is a fifty-minute cycle, and that's a little long. So like I think, I mean, like the game in this mission will run for hours and hours and hours. But like. Uh, you, you just didn't, I just didn't need a full, um, like, absolute minimum time that you see all the units is over an hour, you know? Um, that's a little absurd. So I set it at four. Um, subject to maybe change, but I really doubt it. Um, other people can change it. Then these are the units, and these I can go through really fast. These are just, like, when these are active, they're running and doing their thing. Um, and so, like, when you set these out, as we'll do in just a moment, you just set out waypoints. 
Um, these all have controllers, and like I haven't talked about those yet because we're gonna wire them up in this one, and we'll talk about them then. But that's how these units are controlled. It's kind of how everything is that I have um, set up is organized: is that you have a control set and you have the unit set. This allows easy copy and pasting and like collecting items together uh, based on their control and separate and allowing you to move and modify the control components of a collection of units without having to fuck with ones that you've like. I'm sorry that I said that. I probably didn't curse like that, but I do it. Um, I'm also not terribly sorry. So the <laughs> um, the waypoints are um, like you know if you have your waypoint set, but you want to move your controller around, you don't want to like fuss. You don't want them getting all messed up. Uh, so what we have here is a train. This just makes one train run. I'm probably gonna fix this one up a little bit. I wanted to do something a little fancier, but it just makes a train run, and it runs from source to target. And when it gets to target, a few minutes later, it starts a new train. Um, if it's in a division. All of these units, by the way, are fire and forget, one run, pew, pew, done. When they finish success or failure, they stop. Um, if you put them inside a division, the division will restart them or start the next one and keep them running infinitely. So that's another feature of the division. Uh, so that was a rail. Then we have, this is a breast and it's like, um, I'm sorry, this is probably a column. And it's, so it's like, this is units moving in a column, but off-road. Um, you can change that, but it, it, it's set for off-road. The supply lines that are inside the division are the same concept, but on road. And you can use them elsewhere if you so desire, but that's where they live. Um, this is a breast, so these are like tanks. They don't have to be tanks, but they move like tanks off the road. Um, and then we move into all three of these are air units, and they're all set up the same way. They're very flexible. So they can be fighters, they can be bombers, they can be carpet bombers, they can be recon, all based on some little things that you set on there. Um, and the difference between the three of them here is just the number. So this is a flight of airplanes are, and this is no rag, like the AI in this in this game and the way that, the fact that it's running all the physics through CPU is heavy duty and is really awesome. So like, but AI airplanes are brutal. <laughs> like they're very, very, very expensive. So I made three separate flight setups so that you can really control it. If you're going to use AI at all, like some of the really historic missions, I think I'm only using like maybe three or five airplanes, which are just kind of there for color. Like maybe I can send in some super high level um, carpet bombers, you know, like something that's like totally a target and maybe something that's not that fun for other people to fly, um, but is important to the battle. Or I can use them for supply lines. Um, but you can, if you don't use a lot of ground units, really put like 16 planes in a multiplayer and so i have with that in mind i have a set that's three um i have a set that's five aircraft and a set that's seven aircraft and the ones that are on this side i don't know if this i should have explained this right at the beginning all this is just the germans and these are just the russians they're identical um i kind of don't like that I, I like single point of truth where you know like so right now if i change this i also have to change that but that's just two of them and like oh, there's a bunch of shit in here that is side specific so they are actually each unique um still single point of truth still kind of holds anywho um it's probably time to start building if this went too long no it didn't okay cool i'm trying to keep them around 50 minutes and we're already almost there but this, this little next stage, starting the building, does not take long. I probably won't finish the building in this one because of like. Um, so in this one, I am. you don't have to make it a battle. Each of these units is like, this is true. This is like the top level, most abstract. And this is like the lowest level, least abstract um, units. But you, you can use any of these independently. Like this has components when we get, when you learn more details about it, you could use it. You could just grab this one component and use it in your mission to like display and signal based on events. Um, all of them are pretty independent. Maybe the division and army less so, but like there's components in them that would be interesting anywhere. Anywho, uh, so this is a super boring example mission. I normally come over here and write this. Actually, I normally do it in notepad, but whatever. Um, text editor of your choice. Uh, and then we kind of like decide what we're going to do. This is insanely generic. So I'm just going to go Russians. Germans, like literally just like that. And so we'll take a German army. And this army is going to provide us with a multiplayer air base. And I'm just copying and pasting this in. Um, we're going to configure it in a second and quickly at that. Um, a little bit of this copy and pasting takes a bit of time. So the air base is somewhere around there. I'm just putting it so that I know the air base is inside there in the group. Um, I guess if I wanted to be official about this. We go like this, and I'm saying I'm basically saying I want my airbase there. Now here's an example of why um, here I have units that are real units, 
And here I have just controllers. And so I'm kind of going to move the controls off screen. And we're inside the group right now. I, we don't need to open it up right now. And then this is the like front line. And so I'm not going to tell you how that works right now. Um, but like you could name, like if we wanted this to be, this is an example of mission and not realistic, but to make it be stupid, kind of realistic, we'll call it the German Sixth Army, right? <laughs> I'm not really tempted to call it the Arme. <laughs> uh, not, not really, I won't do that ever, I promise. <laughs> so um, all I'm doing is just like rearranging them. There's four of them because it displays the different colors based on levels. Don't worry about it. I just named one of them. The rest aren't named and it's a line. Um, and what this means is that it's going to show the Sixth Army's line right there, which is pretty cool. And if we want to be really official, and we're going to be because this doesn't really matter. Well, actually, just because this is really easy. Um, having a bit of keyboard trouble. Hold up. Yeah, I don't know. Have you guys ever had this? There it is. Okay. Just the map wasn't working. Huh. Okay, got it. Um, that was kind of frustrating. So in here, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, this is just like a little base. As I said, this is kind of like... Um, there's just a little like collection that goes with the air base. Um, itself that's for the multiplayer. It's not super tough. It's not super awesome. It's got a bunch of um, airplane units that are appropriate for the side um, that are easy to lay out. So like, I'm really not going to do this for real um, because it takes a little bit of time to lay out all the units. But I'm going to show you. I guess I might as well. We'll just skip. What we'll do is we'll go through the German side pretty thoroughly. And um, now you know how well I plan these. Um, and we'll... Uh, uh, just skip the Russian side. Duh. You don't need to see me do the same thing twice. All I'm doing is literally grabbing these units and moving them around. Like, they may not be exactly what you want. Like, here's just a bunch of um, static planes and whatever. But, like, they're here so that you can set them up how you want them. And it's not hard at all to go, oh, I just don't want dugouts there. I want fuel. Okay, now you got it. Um, and then you would move these planes around to do somewhere cool and awesome, which they're currently not. And then I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, yeah, totally. So then this also includes some artillery, put it places that it doesn't um, conflict. This is more. And you can set these also, of course, to different types of units if you want. I have it like kind of loosely configured. Um, with m for this unit, it's mostly anti-aircraft because this is an airbase. But if you had this airbase way up front, you might want to change that. You also get a little truck that just moves in a cycle, um, and like reports its cycling, and you can use that cycle report to um, like repair these things if you want. But there's other ways of repairing them too, and I I generally don't do that. I know those trucks to me are just for color. They're here. You can make them drive anywhere you want. Let's have them go right here. And they're just going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's it. Um, if they get destroyed, it doesn't really hurt anything. They're just really for color. But they do, if you repair, if the events occur such that these units get repaired, then those trucks get repaired too. So we have one other thing to set in the army, and that's the base. And so on this is like this is like a primary target. So um, and should be thought of it that way. I'm going to leave the nice map again to be... This map is actually awesome. Um, it's one of the best things that happened. Let's make it be... So, like, let's actually make this be highly contested. Um, and we'll put the German base, like, right back here. It's pretty easy to hit for the Russians. Um, I'm actually kind of tempted to put it there. And I might... That's the other thing, is that these are very flexible. Like, this can go up. We have it all configured. We can go right back in and make very simple changes to make very significant differences in how the battle works. Um, which is great, because then you can also make variations on a battle, um, taking literally an already existing mission and just modifying it, um, which saves a good deal of time. If I build a full-size mission, and by that I mean it is three, at least four divisions versus four divisions, um, and that's quite a bit, it takes me about two and a half hours to build it out, um, uh, being kind of generic about it. 
Um, and I'd say like probably cycling through it, it's probably like, it's probably an eight hour process to get a mission totally cool. Um, but that's actually for the people that have built pretty complex missions and how complex these end up being, it's actually quite fast. And it's very reliable because all the components have all been fully tested. So um, I'm not saying there's not bugs, like I'm sure that there are, but I mean like it's deeply tested uh, and we can talk about that on some other video. So I'm just putting the base right here. Um, it might be in trees, I don't care. It's taking too much time and I wanna show you guys the rest of this. So I'm now gonna put inside my army, like right now our army only has our multiplayer air base that's defended and a base. Um, but we want some units in there. And we would like to put in um, some airplanes. Basically we're gonna put in a few divisions. Oh, and we'll go ahead and name this too. Six German. And you saw I named that icon out there um, here. So there I just named it the army, that one. And inside this army, the sixth German army, we're gonna put, let's say three divisions. And what I'm gonna do in this battle is this is gonna be highly AI aircraft. Um, this is probably not a great way to go for multiplayer games, but like this is a tiny little mission and like this is supposed to be just like for fun and to see it. And honestly, AI aircraft are the easiest things to set up. You, like the worst things to set up are trucks on the road. I think you can imagine why. You have to like very carefully put all the things in place. Airplanes, you can just kind of be like, yeah, there's some waypoints over there, <laughs> right? I mean, it's a little more than that, but you, you catch me. Um, so we're inside the sixth army and I just copied over one division. And we're, I'm literally just making up these numbers um, to show you that you can do that. We'll call this the 40th Air Division. I like to copy it. Inside a division, there's a, there's a couple things that you set when you give it a name. Uh, one of those things is this icon right here. All of these icons, when there's something that you set, it'll be named. See, that's unnamed, so you don't have to set it. This one's named, and it's named generically, division, but it's really our 40th Air Division. And then it's also good, um, and I think that the display on this thing I'm about to explain is gonna change just a touch, um, but you'll see that there is basically, all of these icons are set to display, and this is how reconnaissance works, um, always their information of what's going on to the friendly side, and only after reconnaissance to the enemy side. And you can do reconnaissance in a couple ways that's a different subject for a different video. But, um, so this is also named division, and what this is, is this is a little base. You know like how there's the big base with the 6th Army? I gotta name that in there too, actually, I forgot. Um, but this is the little base and you name it here. And the reason is, is that the way I'm displaying this right now is that when it doesn't have brackets around it, it means that the units, the defenses inside it, specifically the defenses like the AA or the, um, or the artillery are destroyed. And if it does have brackets around it, it's alive. So um, I'm not going into too much of the details of this because you can tell by just looking at it. You get it, I'm just naming it up. And to show you what I forgot, is if I go back to the sixth German army, bounce out. By the way, all this stuff is really well um, organized for poking around that way, by the way, um, with the tree, which is good. Um, we'll see that this is just called base or something. Yeah, right? So we're gonna call this the sixth army base. And I'm putting brackets around the ones that I know are the ones that mean I'm still alive or I'm currently alive. And you can, you'll always be able to test that by just looking. So you'll see like, this is show to enemy, that's why it's red. This is show to friends. This is alive, this is dead. This is alive, this is dead. Um, the It's literally the opposite order, like it's rotated um, 180 degrees on the Russian side, where this is show to friends and this is show to enemies and this is alive and this is dead. And that's just because I literally rotated the units. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So we're going back inside the sixth German army and then back inside the division, the 40th Air Division that we put in there. Now, some people might wanna put units in here now, and that's fine, inside the division, if you want to, but I'm gonna, I like to lay out all my divisions so that I kinda of like see where they fit in the world. Um, and I also like to plug them in to the army before I even start putting units inside them. That way I just know that like my plug-in stuff is working, and we'll talk about that really fast. So here's another division, and then we're gonna do three. Checking the time real fast, we're at 24 minutes. I'm just, I think I can do the rest in about seven. Um, and what, what so what we're gonna get to on the stage is on the last one, I basically went through, if you, if you do, 
if you're paying attention to these videos or care or wants a little bit more detail, the last video I went through a good deal of the details of what's inside these. I did go through a pretty good deal of the detail of what's inside these on this one too, but the last one was more thorough. And um, this one, we're going to get to the stage where we're just about to literally put the units waypoints on the map, uh, but we're going to get all the units in play um, and wired in together. So I set a 40th air division. We'll set a like 192nd. Again, these are made up numbers. Um, I mean, I guess I did use the six German army. I could have taken real ones from there, but in and then this one is not going to be air division. This is going to be like uh, we'll call this the 14th Panzer, and that's a real one. Uh, and if you just to go through it again, I will show you the things that you set. You set this icon here. To whatever it is and then you set the little base that icon on the outside that i just set um, is the thing that shows what level it demonstrates it shows on the map what level the current division is at whether it's at the blue green orange or red a b c or d what health it's at um, you'll be able to see that from the map very clearly i don't know if i could explain it in words as as clear as it would be just from looking at the game Um, and I do have a gameplay video. Uh, I'm probably going to put up a new one because it's a little bit outdated, but not it's not outdated in a sense that it's meaningless at all. It's just um, some of the visual things have changed slightly. Cool, so now I've set all the divisions in the 6th Army for the Germans. And you'll see it's a little bit disorganized now, but you'll see that in just a moment that I get to clean that up really fast. Uh, but we have the 40th, 192nd, and the 14th inside the 6th. And so to demonstrate how to clean that up, and that's part of the reason I don't add units yet, which we're just about to do, is so now I have the 6th Army, and this is my 6th Army controller. These are my 6th Army units over here. And these are the three divisions I just put inside it. And I want these divisions to be controlled. Now, the way that this controller bit works of the army, and when we look inside the division, um, we'll see there's a very similar paradigm, is that in almost all my units, and this I discussed last time too, on the left are inputs and on the right are outputs. Um, regular old flow. So um, here has this section is kind of like controller from the outside. And this thing is like an interface to the stuff it contains. Because this thing is a. Um, really just runs in parallel um, it's a splitter you know but it, it controls all those units simultaneously so each of these guys the 40th air division each of these divisions I copied the 192nd and the 14th have inside them and we're gonna straight up ungroup them right now look at that They have a controller that goes inside that. And that's how it works. And the way that you wire it in is named right here. So this is what we had before. This came from inside, this came from inside the division, what is currently highlighted. All this was inside the division. This is inside the army. We grab this part from inside the division. Um, and they all look like that, exactly like that. And we put it right here. We leave this part out right now because that's where we're going to put the units. Um, and we'll get there in just one second. And then we interface each of these guys. Each of these divisions we're going to interface like this. Activate to activate. Show to enemy. Show to enemy. I'm going to talk about, in the previous video, I talked about what all these buttons meant. Um, Right now, you can think of them as just signals, which is what they are, that tells the units inside to do things. And then it also signals out when things happen, when it succeeds, when it fails, and when it shuts down. And shutdown is handled here, and that is unfortunately a topic for a later video, because the way that shutdown across these parallel things works is a little complex. Um, so what we have now is we have now wired in um, into a controller are 
40th. Um, actually, see, this is why we named these. I forgot what I called it. Yeah, 40th Air Division. And we need to add air units to it. So we'll just put it right over here. Other people will like to do this in other ways. And there really is a good reason for putting the units in there before doing what I'm doing right now, um, organizationally. But I think demonstratively, which is what we're doing, um, this is clearer. So this is our 192nd air unit, and we're doing exactly the same thing. So this and this and how they connect to the army are what this and this are, this and this are to a division. So I'm, the way that I'm using these to hook divisions into armies, I'm going to use these to hook units into divisions, thus allowing you to create arbitrary divisions of arbitrary complex and variety units and um, and exactly the same thing for divisions to units. Armies to divisions and divisions to units. I might have said that silly. And like, really, that's it. Like, the division is now entirely, these two divisions are now entirely controlled by that army. And that army only needs to, like, know, hey, you should start, <laughs> kind of thing. I mean, you can send it other signals, but that's all it needs. Um, and then we do exactly the same thing with our 14th Panzer. I remember if I named that right. I did. And really, like how I name those icons and how I know which name icons name. When you see the units, there's a the inside of the units. There's a complication there too. I know that that might seem like what what are you even doing, dude? <laughs> like like why? How am I supposed to remember that? But like when as soon as you get a little better grasp on how these things work for anybody that ends up using them, it's not that hard. Um, I will answer any questions from anybody. Like I really do want people to use this because I really deeply think that you can we can make really historic missions that are like really meaningful with it um and and i'm 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 gonna be able to make a good number of them but i think that it's way better if there's other people making them too i would really love that like so much so that i would give significant help to anyone that actually wanted um to get down on it so um now what we have hooked up is we have hooked up our three divisions into our army each of our divisions needs units. Um, I probably am out of time, so I'm just going to hook up. Yeah, I'm calling that out of time. So I'm just going to hook up one unit. So I go into units German, and I know on my 40th air unit, I'm going to use the set of five. We're going to do like maybe 8v8 um, eight, 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 eight on this one, I think, on airplanes. So I just copy it. This is just the unit and its controller. Um, it's air five. The unit, the controller is also named. I grab the whole thing. I unselect this thing because that little button is just a restarter. It just makes it restart itself um, after it finishes. And like, we don't want that. We want the division to control it. I might actually remove those buttons from the boneyard. Um, then again, I might not. So we can just go straight into the sixth German army because of how we've ungrouped our things. And we're gonna just add this unit into here. And so I want this 40th air unit to be flight of five airplanes. I want it to be consistently a flight of five airplanes, but I don't want it to be the same five airplanes. I want it to be three different sets of five airplanes. So I now copy in, but only one active at a time. Um, and so like what we'll probably do with that is that um, one will be a, um, like maybe a deep um, or up high air to ground. Um, one will be a, by deep I mean far in enemy territory or something. Um, one will be a like defensive, um, like maybe attacking ground units, air to ground, Stromovic style, maybe attacking ground units that are attacking your friendly units. And maybe another one will be like um, fighters, M might be defensive. Like, oh, uh, maybe that, that, in fact, we'll probably definitely do that. Um, so since these guys are, as I mentioned, a zipper, and that really just means um, it's called a one hole context, it means one, you're in a structure that you currently are active and you can go one direction or the other direction and only one can be active at a time. And it's really that last bit that matters the most. Is only one can be active at a time. So it allows you to sequence based on events and these can succeed or fail. So essentially, although the wiring is a little bit more complex than my description here, not by much, um, you know, you can say, when I succeed, make this happen. Um, when I fail, make that happen. And so what ends up happening is like maybe different units go out, maybe different um, routes, and we'll display that here in just one second. 
And so what we do is I'm going to have it be three different sets. As I mentioned before, um, divisions can have from one to four um, groups of units in there. I'm putting three in this one. And so um, I call this top one A. Um, this middle one is B and C because it's for the four levels. And so that's just how I'm organizing this one. You could put the three in. It could be A and B, um, C, D. It could be A and D, uh, B, C. Like, um, you could you could organize it any way you want. But I'm doing A, B, and C together, and D. So in other words, when the division is at level A and is blue, this unit will be active. When the division is at level B or C, which is green or orange, this unit will be active. When the division is at level D, um, which is red, this unit will be active. And there's more significance to just the colors controlling what units are active, considerably more actually, but um, I'm just not ready to talk about that on this video. Um, we'll talk about it both, we'll probably talk about it in two mission building videos ahead, but it's talked about at length in the current play video, if someone's interested. So um, what we need to do now, and it's the last thing we need to do here, I know you guys are like, shut up, man, uh, is that now that we kind of group these, See, I, na I named those groups so that if I did something stupid, like got these out of order, um, I can find them again. There is, and I've asked for it before, I'll continue asking for it, and I kind of understand why it doesn't happen and maybe never will, but undo would be so awesome. <laughs> so awesome. So now that I've named these two, and just to kind of represent that only one is active at a time, I can put them right on top of each other. And often when um, I'm test testing and starting to build missions, the next video we'll talk about this in detail, I put them actually exactly on top of each other. Only one of these sets can be active at a time. And it lets you build out and let you know, like, hey, is my mission pretty good? And then you take the ones that, the secondary and the third one, the one that isn't going in the single route, and you just modify them to go in the new routes the way that you want them to. It makes testing and building the mission easy. We'll talk about that at a pretty good length. So what I do here is I now need to wire up these guys. And this wire up is a little bit different. Last one was one to one. It was activate to activate, show to enemy, show to enemy. This one has two one to one buttons, which are uh, run and show to enemy. And by that, I mean, it connects to all the internal units spread out simultaneously. But these are what level it's at, one, two, three, and four. And this is how you control which unit is active. So A is active at one, B, is active at level B and C. And the last one is active at D. And we just did it. And then this has a little complication too. So these guys only report success or failure. And again, the last video talked about these buttons and their meanings at much greater length. All success we hit here, which is the name of this button. Any success, I'm sorry. Any fail we hit here. And what this really means is like, hey, my unit failed. Um, I, well, you need to start the next unit. Um, or my unit succeeded, you need to start the next unit. But then there's success and failure. And what this means is like the whole division just succeeded. And this is a separate button because I want you as a mission designer to make it be anything that you want um, that happens in here. But it's customary and I often do, and it makes total sense to be when the best unit, when we're at A, when that one succeeds, that's success for the division. And that's the only success for the division. So when this guy succeeds, that's not success. That's just like getting you back to A. Um, and when the worst level, the red level, fails, that's failure for the whole division. And so that means that, like, so because we just wire that up this way, when the lowest level fails, it'll end up firing this failure, which will go into the army, and then the army handles that failure in the way that it wants to. Um, so different things can happen here um, for organization. What I do is I slide this down those are all wired up i put these guys in here um and i group this whole bit up um like this that's what i do um and then i'm ultimately going to group all that up but you guys can do whatever you want i then take and i do this exact same thing for the other two divisions the 192nd and the um, 14th i then take the map marker of how the division's doing which are these two guys um, the supply lines, which is right there, and the little division base, and I group them up with all the units that are connected, like this. And then I name it. 40 there. And then it's really clear. I name the group up here the same. 
So it's really clear. See, this is the division controller. This is the army controller. This is the division controller for this that we just built out. This is the division controller for the 192nd, which is right there. Um, you can see the name there. And this is the division for the 14th, which is right here. And then we put these units in play. So like what I do at this stage is I put these guys generally where I'm going to put them. So like this is going to be an air unit, so I want it to have some kind of air base. We'll make these guys be the totally forward dudes. And we'll end up making... So this, this informs, yeah, I do want to keep the army base back here because we're going to put this division base for the 40th right here. And that'll be a great little target. So the division base is similar to the army base. Now, when you hurt the army base, you actually, when you really damage the army base, you actually damage the entire army. When you really damage the division base, you damage the division. You can knock it down a level is what you can do. So it can go from green to orange or something. So then, um, so what I've done is I've just kind of like, okay, my supply lines are kind of here. Obviously, they just run into the water. That'd be stupid. And my airplanes are kind of here. And like, this is a tiny map. So I'm obviously going to have to move the waypoints. They go all the way out to here. But I don't do that yet. I then build out the 192nd and the, and the 14th, and I then place them here in the same kind of way, and then I start placing the units. And that's it. Like, really, the way that I just connected this division, you connect these other two divisions, you do the same thing on the Russian side with the same with the units that you want to use and the setup that you want to use. You hit, boom, activate on the army, and that whole thing runs, and it runs forever. And they, they interact with each other, they affect each other, and you have other things you can do to it too, like with that wounded and recon. Um, and as we start building out this mission in the next uh, video, you'll learn a lot more about that. Okay, thank you so much for listening.